Hi, this is Nicholas Bell with Ion Cinema, here to review Port Authority, the directorial debut of Danielle Lesovitz, which premiered in Un Certain Regard at the 2019 Cannes Film Festival. Momentum Pictures is releasing it May 28th. 2021. Uh, so this is set in modern times. It focuses on uh, a 20-year-old named Paul who arrives from the Midwest on, in the Port Authority bus terminal in New York City. Um, he's played by Fionn Whitehead of Nolan's Dunkirk and the recent Voyagers. Uh, he is immediately distressed because uh, his half-sister, who we come to see is played by Louisa Krauss, was supposedly uh, there to meet him and she's nowhere to be found. So he has nowhere to go. Uh, his phone, he's unable to reach her. Um, he does spy a group of uh, ballroom kids, uh, uh, brown and black trans queer youths uh, dancing uh, outside in the uh, Port Authority steps uh, and he makes eye contact with a woman we come to know as Y, uh, W-Y-E, uh, played by Lena Bloom and they have uh, an eye contact moment. Uh, he attempts to sleep on the subway. He's assaulted and kind of saved by uh, another young man named Lee, played by McCall Lombardi from Andrew Arnold's American Honey. It seems that uh, Lee lives in a homeless shelter, but he kind of controls who goes in and out of it, and he invites Paul to have a bed. Uh, Lee notably also works for a slumlord, uh, collecting landlord fees and or uh, forcing evictions upon tenants who aren't able to pay their uh, landlord fees or their rent on time, uh, so Paul gets looped up in that. Uh, there's another young man named Takei uh, that he recognizes as part of Wise Group at Port Authority, who sneaks out every night. He follows him one night into a ballroom scene and finally has his first interaction with Y. And it seems that they both share uh, an immediate kind of attraction for one another. Uh, eventually, of course, as is predictable, um, Paul learns that she's trans, there's some falling out, uh, but and it ends uh, with a dramatic climax that is really way too forced. At the same time, uh, I really liked how it shows the McQueens, that's where uh, the name of the family of uh, Wise, uh, is really kind of juxtaposed or paralleled really with the same kind of uh, chosen family setup of Lee, who ultimately is the film's predator. Um, at the same time, Lee, in the, the virulent homophobia that is exhibited by uh, his clan of people, dates the film a little bit because to me they're... Um, phobia would be probably more transphobic, uh, and it, it does seem a bit over the top. Uh, however, at the same time, this star-crossed lovers theme is very Montague's and Capulet's Romeo and Juliet. I also really liked Wise name, uh, which as a person who's constantly being questioned about her identity has created a, a name and identity for self which reflects a question back. And also, of course, um, recalls the Bronsky beat uh, queer anthem, Tell Me Why. Uh, Lena Bloom is definitely a discovery. Uh, she can be seen also in two episodes of the last season of Pose. Um, but Fionn Whitehead uh, is also quite impressive. So it, it's a pity that the rest of the film isn't at the same level as they are. Um, I, the overarching themes about the, the Port Authority bus terminal and the transients and the kind of hopefulness of coming there and maybe the despair of being there as well, um, I, I think works uh, effectively. Um, kind of like a counter to, for, for the similar reasons I was thinking of, uh, uh, Madeline Olnick's The Foxy Merkins, where the main character lives in the bathroom at uh, the Port Authority bus terminal. Uh, but if you are a fan of any kind of uh, ballroom content, which uh, we're getting more and more examples of, but you know, for a while it was only Paris is Burning, but you know, there's Kiki and Legendary and uh, Pose and uh, Leave It on the Floor. And I think that uh, this is kind of a, a really great stepping stone to something greater. Uh, for a first film, of course, uh, it's effective. Uh, some of the acting from some of the less uh, experienced ensemble players, you know, it's a little rough around the edges. Uh, it was lensed by Jomo Fr Frey, who shot Sella and the Spades, and a, a pretty good score from Matthew Herbert, who has composed many scores for Sebastian Lelio. Overall, I would give Port Authority three out of five stars. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. 
For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.